I also noticed that uh, desserts are different uh, nowadays. When I was young, the waiter would come and he'd go, what do you want for dessert? Cherry pie or apple pie? And you go, I will have a cherry pie. And a guy bring me, it was very simple, you know? Things were very simple back then. Now, desserts, oh my lord. The guy shows up and he's got a big tray, a canted angle, and every confection known to man is on it. He's, and I don't like the way he talks, like, because he doesn't talk like the pork chop talk anymore. All of a sudden, for the dessert, he's like, all oh, sexual undertones, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's all like, ah. Why are you saying ah like that? He's like, ah. <laughs> May I tempt you with something? <laughs> tempt me. <laughs> you like decadent things? Well, I don't. I hope you left some room in your belly. Okay, listen. Are we still talking about desserts here? What the f What's going on? I don't want to end up blowing you in the bathroom or something. This guy gave me a keychain, a plastic keychain. Well, that guy is a moron. <laughs> How do I get the supermodel back? <laughs> hey, look, $1.99 at the airport. Is it, well, he really gave you a keychain? He key gave chain? me a plastic. I was going to bring it out, but I couldn't get it off of my keys, so I left it in the backstage. But he gave me a keychain. Why didn't okay. you bring out the G-string? <laughs> long, 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 long. I know to smoke. I'll smoke it for you. If no, 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 right. no, I'm trying sure. to. I just figured it would be rude not to offer you a light. It's nice, but I'm trying not to. And I feel if I. <laughs> Sitting there with a cigarette. You know, I feel if I, you know, took one puff. I have an oral fixation, my doctor tells me, which is not good. <laughs> How did he know that? I was sucking his cock. <laughs> you know me, this guy Milos Forman? Yeah, he's yeah. a big director. So he saw me on Saturday Night Live, so he got the idea I was smart. <laughs> I always you know, thought Everybody that. always thought that. Because I'm reading the news yeah. and shit like that. So right. come to that. We go out to we'll eat at Nobu and some shit, right? And so I go with him. <laughs> so it's me, him, and two guys from, for, two foreigners. Right. And so these guys know everything, you know? And uh, so they're like, ah, what about uh, the situation in the Balkans or something like that? <laughs> yeah, you're the newsman. Uh, and I just kind of play along, like, by repeating what they'd said three sentences ago. <laughs> right, yeah. And uh, so anyways, he goes, I put you in the movie, man. I need a guy to, and he was going to, give me a big part right so i was like no 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 don't do that <laughs> like i can't act and he's like ah oh, don't worry about it i go seriously milos i don't want you to give me a big part so he's like, ah, give me, what do you want i go just give, you know, give me a small part that'd be cool so he made me a reporter right in this in this uh, people versus larry flint right okay. yes. yeah i played one of the people right <laughs> so uh, Originally, I think it sounds like you were about to be Larry, Larry Flint. Flint. Right. Oh, my God. Damn, right. Larry Flint. So we uh, go to, uh, we do the movie, right? And uh, uh, and I'm a reporter, you know? So he goes, uh, you know, you drive up and get out of the car and run in. I go, well, I can't drive. He goes, oh. So he goes, Oops. okay, a cab will drive you. So it doesn't make sense. Like right. a reporter is in a cab. <laughs> so we do the scene. It's me and Larry Flint, you know? And me and Woody Harrelson. Yeah. So then, anyways, uh, Woody Harrelson's really cool. And fucking actors man when they're really good it's like something different right you know because i'm just i'm just waiting for the other fucker to stop talking and hope <laughs> to god i remember you're my not even line. paying attention no i'm just right. hoping to remember my words <laughs> so anyways uh fucking what's his name uh, woody harrelson asked me if i want a beer you know mm -hmm. he goes uh, you want a beer i go no it's cool i don't i don't drink you know he goes you don't want a beer i go no i don't drink but thanks man and then I go, uh, you drink? Like, uh, I thought you just smoked weed and all that shit. And then uh, all of a sudden, Milos Forman goes, Cut! What the fuck is going on? <laughs> like, we were in the movie. You didn't know. You didn't know. But you he thought he's talking, talking to you. Because he was looking at me and talking like a, a regular person. <laughs> Oy, there was nothing fake. Imagine if you woke up and you realized you were wrong about everything. You just, you just woke up and you go, God damn, I've been wrong about every single thing I've ever believed. <laughs> then it's time to go down to the rope store, in my opinion, because <laughs> it's not gonna get better, you know? And go to the rope store, that's my suggestion to you. 
and get a, a hunk of rope about this big and then go to the rickety stool store. And listen, it's no coincidence that the rope store and the rickety stool store are always right beside each other, right? I don't want to get political or anything like that, but... When people commit suicide, no one ever understands. You know what I mean? People commit suicide, people go, I don't, I don't understand why. And I go, you don't? <laughs> what, you live in a cotton candy house or something? What the fuck? You don't know about life? How it only disappoints and gets worse and worse until it ends in a catastrophe? The fuck? There's two reasons guys will hang themselves from the neck. One is, like we said, to escape this worthless masquerade of a life we pretend we have. And the second reason we hang ourselves from the neck is to whack off. These guys, I don't understand. It's called autoerotic asphyxiation. It's a big fancy word, but it's a filthy thing. <laughs> and uh, this is my problem with it. The risk reward <laughs> is not good. 21 years old, he was in a McDonald's going, you want lids on these? <laughs> Everybody's different, but <laughs> I'm sorry. There's worth in that. No, here, can you pick it up out of here? Yeah, yet? sure, I'll pick it up for you here. No, but while you're down there. Yeah. <laughs> you're writing a book. Yes. How to be a model. Yes. The complete idiot's guide to getting into modeling. So, like, rule number one, Go. be incredibly beautiful. Right. <laughs> I mean, what are the no, things no, that you can I do? Know rule number two. Yeah. Uh, Don't be a midget. No. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. Are you Jewish? Yeah. Okay, then you'll get it. Oh, okay. Okay. Half Jewish. No, I'm full. Full Jewish. Full Jewish. All right, then. But you're young, so you might not get it. Yeah, maybe. Okay, so here's the joke. Holocaust denier. I'm also... <laughs> My father's favorite joke? Yep. Well, he had a joke, uh, uh, roses are gray, violets are gray, tulips are gray, because I am a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We first met, I met you underneath the Queensboro Bridge. You, at the time, were jerking off punks for $15 a man. Um, my, my whole family's watching, man. My grandmother. Your family doesn't know that when you were a young man, you used to jerk off punks for $15 a man? All joking aside, I know you love to joke, Bob Dole, you know, but that guy, he's a war hero, you know? Yeah, yeah. He's, he gave his, his uh, arm for his country, you know, he went through all these debilitating injuries during the war for his country, it was great. And in all fairness, though, Bill Clinton also, he had a, a kind of some war injuries. Really? You know? Yeah. When he was in England there during the Vietnam War, I heard he, uh, <laughs> I heard he, uh, he had a bad injury, he burned his mouth on a bomb. Really? Yeah. Do you think this would be funny, just as a practical joke, if you just wrote a suicide note and just blamed some random guy? <laughs> would you think that would be, you know what I mean? You know, like your barber or something like that, you know? You go, you go it was all Ralph Abernathy's fault. <laughs> because you know the police would be compelled to go to Abernathy's barber shop. And go, have you ever heard of a fellow named Norm MacDonald? I go, yeah, he'd come in every couple of months for a trim. Oh, okay, well anyways, he took his life because of you. <laughs> he wrote it here in this letter. Would you like to keep the... And then Ralph Abernathy would have to spend the rest of his life walking down. This week in Minneapolis, the Minnesota Obesity Center officially opened. Its goals? To find ways to identify behaviors that lead to obesity. 
Also, it's a good place to meet fat chicks. against spanking yes even with children spanking. with children with yeah with well unless it's two consenting adults yeah, i don't really have any spanking. what about when they get you and then it hits the back of your balls oh. <laughs> 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 you know old joy they are in? Well, i don't think she wants you to tell everybody it's in her wikipedia oh she's i think a lot older than 70. I thought. yeah that sounds she looks great. That sounds about right to me. Seventy? No, yeah. I never. I didn't think of her as seventy. Jesus Christ Almighty! When did she break? Fifty? I like her. I like her too. She reminds me. You know, she reminds me of like your old aunt or something. Yeah, you know, yeah. With her funny opinions. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? The view is about you. This is fucking, what kind of hen house horse shit is that? I went to that Friars Club once. I never seen a roast or anything like that, Joy, but. I, see, I went one time, I loved playing poker. I had a bit of a gambling problem for a while, and I couldn't get enough poker games, right? So this dude, he told me, you gotta go to the Friars Club, man. There's a big poker game there, right? I have to talk to four people here. <laughs> so, so, uh, so I go to the, to the Friars Club. Barbara, are you listening? Yeah. yeah no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. They tell me there's this great, there's this big poker game, right? So I go there and there's all these old dudes there, right? And they're all comics from like 50 years ago and I don't know who the hell they are, you know? And it's not like famous comics like Milton Berle or anybody like that. It's these B-level comics from 50 years ago, you know? Like a Freddie Roman and dudes like that, right? So they're all playing poker, you know? They're all playing poker. And I'm playing poker, I just want to play poker, but they're all like making jokes, you know? And every joke they're making involves me being a gay dude. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they'll go, ah, right, here you go, uh, kid, here's a, you know, be like a queen, I get a queen. <laughs> they go, right, here's a lady for the lady. Ah! You know? And they all laugh, you know? And I didn't notice at first, I'm just playing cards, and all of a sudden I realize every joke is me being a, a homosexual man, right? So I'm not a homosexual man, as you well know. So, <laughs> He's definitely not. You're not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. But let me tell you something else. Uh. I would have sex with you while you were awake. <laughs> for me. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, no, no story. It's just, and then I'm playing and then all of a sudden this old dude next to me goes, ah, kid, just, uh, uh, you gotta, you gotta show them, uh, show them what you're made of. You insult them too. You know, so I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, so there's an old dude There's like 70 years old. So I go, hey, uh, uh there old dude, you probably, uh, have had a few guys. I've had sex with a few guys, right? And he goes, <laughs> well, that, so that, 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 that's the story. So that's the story. <laughs> When you're writing, you learn a lot of that. I went to a guy who was a big writer guy. He told me about things I didn't know about. Metaphors. You ever hear of them? He said, you got to use metaphors. I'm like, what's that? He's like, that's a thing. So a metaphor is like, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. So I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? So he's like... That means you can take a person, you know, and you can give them all the information and everything, but it, he still has to be the one to absorb it himself. So I was like, well, why the fuck didn't you just say that? Like, what? <laughs> why do you have to put a horse into it? Like, what? You thought I was so stupid you needed to make it into some fable? Like, what? <laughs> a horse? The nation is still reeling from Thursday's bombshell announcement that Lisa Marie Presley has filed for divorce from Michael Jackson. According to friends, the two were never a good match. She's more of a uh, stay-at-home type, and he's more of a homosexual pedophile. So. In an effort to raise money for his enormous legal bills, O.J. Simpson this week began marketing a video which attempts to prove his innocence. Should the tape not sell, Simpson has a backup idea, his very own video of the actual murders themselves. <laughs> Sorry. 
Well, let's get to O.J. O.J. Simpson's lawyers say they don't want the families of Nicole Brown and Ronald Goldman in the courtroom during the trial. They're afraid the presence of the family members will just remind O.J. of how much more killing he still has to do. <laughs> According to a survey, 58% of men would have sex with a woman they disliked. Although, while having sex, they would really, really like them, and then afterwards, not like them again. In a recent interview, Christy Brinkley suggested that football players should have special gloves connected to lights on their helmets. That way, when they catch the ball, you'll know who has possession. Read these and other interesting ideas in Christie's new book, I'm an Idiot. <laughs> well, in a sworn deposition this week, O.J. Simpson claimed that he never, ever beat, choked, or hit his ex-wife with a closed or open fist. Luckily for O.J., lawyers forgot to ask if he'd ever cut her head off. <laughs> Well, in a recent interview, Christopher Reeve said that Robin Williams' comedy helped convince him to go on living. He then added that Polly Shore's comedy made him pray for the sweet release that death would bring. <laughs> and the Pope came out with a book this week, which contains a series of essays examining faith and morality in today's secular world and the changing role of the Catholic Church as it approaches the 21st century. The book is entitled... God himself told me that O.J. is guilty. <laughs> King of Pop, Michael Jackson, who collapsed during rehearsals for a concert last week, has been released from the hospital. Doctors say his condition is stable and continues to improve, although he is still a freak. <laughs> Well, O.J. Simpson's lawyers stopped feuding this week, finally. The Dream Team, F. Lee Bailey and Robert Shapiro, were able to put aside their differences and express their admiration for each other after O.J. threatened to cut their heads off. <laughs> In an interview out this week, Demi Moore says she would like to have another baby, this time a boy to go along with her three daughters and two huge breasts. <laughs> While performing in New York this week to a packed audience, Yoko Ono shocked the crowd by tearing up a Bible. Most shocking of all, Yoko Ono performed to a packed audience. <laughs> wow. Well, according to published reports, Michael Jackson's wife is now pregnant with the pop star's second child. Asked why he decided to become a father again so soon, Jackson explained that his seven-month-old son is starting to lose his looks. <laughs> and in Boise, the Idaho State Medical Board has censured Dr. LeVar Withers after dozens of women alleged that he fondled them while their legs were up in stirrups. An angry Dr. Withers replied, "Hey." If I'm such a monster, why didn't they just go to another dentist? <laughs> Three years ago, an 11-year-old British schoolgirl put a message in a bottle and tossed it into the Atlantic Ocean. Well, this week, she was astounded to receive a reply from halfway around the world. Sadly, the reply read, You're 11? What are you wearing? <laughs> On Friday, the Juice officially endorsed Bill Clinton for president, adding, adding, quote, I'd like to help him any way I can. To which the president replied, well, there is one thing. <laughs> 20th Century Fox has announced that Macaulay Culkin will not be hired to star in Home Alone 3. Studio spokesman said that it was nothing personal, but with Culkin now 16 years of age, the only way to keep him in the film would be to make the character retarded. <laughs> well, there may be trouble in paradise. Lisa Marie Presley confirmed this week that she and Michael Jackson live in separate residences 50 miles away from each other. Lisa Marie was quoted as saying, 
I guess being married to a homosexual pedophile wasn't such a great idea after all. <laughs> In an effort to feel smarter than somebody, Dan Quayle this week spoke to 4,000 Amway employees. <laughs> President Clinton up here on crutches making a speech. I mean, I thought that was just uh, amazing, you know. Uh, I mean, it's been difficult for the president. You know, he can't jog now, and uh, he needs help getting around, and he still, you know, he still uh, occasionally suffers great pain, you know. Uh, on the upside, you got your medical marijuana, so that's, uh, you know. <laughs> you must inhale, sir. It's the only way you're going to get better. It's... You want to hear my dad's yeah. favorite joke? Yeah. He says, uh, he was from the farm, you know, and he says, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, a guy uh, a guy comes from the city, oh. a city slicker comes, and he <laughs> buys a, uh, a farm, and the farmer next door comes over to him and says, hey, now, uh, would you like to come over to my house tonight? We're going to have a, a big shindig for you, uh, because, you know, we're neighborly here, and the city guy said, well, this is something that's... I really like, you know, that this is why I moved to the farm to have things like this, you know. Guy says it'll be a hell of a big party, you know. He goes, it'll be, you know, a little a little uh, drinking, a little fighting, a little fucking, you know. And the guy, city guy goes, well, that sounds good. What time should I be here? And the, and the farmer goes, any time you like, just the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> so they would drink, then get in a fight, <laughs> and <then> fuck. <laughs> It's your dad's uh, favorite that joke. That's my dad's favorite joke. There's Charles Woodson. How about that? Oh, what a season he had. Great, Manny. He became the first defensive player to win the Heisman Trophy. And congratulations, Charles. That is something that no one can ever take away from you. Unless you kill your wife and a waiter, in which case... <laughs> I uh, came here uh, from Las Vegas, uh, Nevada, and when I was on the air, uh, uh, where do airplanes go from? Airports. <laughs> I was in the airport, and uh, guys were asking, me, everybody wanted my ID, and it occurred to me that ID is a strange abbreviation, because I is short for I, and then D is short for identification. So, <laughs> Seems to me D is doing most of the <laughs> legwork on that one. Something people don't know about you. I'm a deeply closeted gay guy. No kidding. Well, I'm not coming out, though. Wait a minute. What are you revealing here today? I'm, I'm not revealing anything. I'm saying I'm deeply closeted. Well, that means you're gay. Well, I wouldn't say that. Why would I say that? I'm deeply closeted. No, but I... That means you're very, very gay, but you don't want to come out. You're so closeted... That I refuse to say I'm gay. Right. Exactly. But that... Doesn't that mean you're gay? Hey, 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 easy, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> There's this movie coming out. Yes. Title undetermined at this point. Chairman of the board. Oh. All right. Do something with that, you freak. <laughs> I, I bet the board is spelled B-O-R-E-D. <laughs> ah, but I quit smoking. That's good for your teeth, man. You ever try that? Holy cow, is that tough, huh? I smoked ever since I was a kid. I always remember smoking, you know? One time I remember as a little kid, I was like eight years old, and I was behind my garage, I was sneaking a cigarette back there, and my dad caught me, I'll never forget it. His big head came around the corner of the garage. There it was, my dad's big head. And then his body, right after it, there was his body. Trailing his head as it often would. And he grabbed me, and he hauled me in, and I thought I was in for the strapping of my life, you know? What he did is he pulled out his giant cigar, 
Must have been half the size of my arm, this big cigar. Stuck it in my mouth, lit it up, made me smoke it all the way through, right to the end. That's when I started smoking cigars real heavy. That, that plan backfired on him. Then there was another time I remember, now that I'm thinking about it, I was behind the garage again, as luck would have it. And uh, this time I was smoking a big fat joint back there. And uh, don't do drugs. <laughs> and uh, my dad's big head showed up again. And there's no body this time, just a big head. That was the funny part. You like to mix it up like that, you know? So anyways, he grabbed me there with his teeth and he hauled me in. And uh, I thought I was in for the strapping of my life, you know, but uh, injected me with heroin. So he was, he was a strict man, I'll tell you that. But you gotta quit smoking, that's all I know, man. You gotta quit smoking. It's not all I know, I know other things too, but it'd uh, be a kind of a wasted life if that's all I combed out of a dare. But, but uh, you gotta quit smoking, because otherwise you get old and then unhealthy, you know? You see a lot of that, you know? Although some guys don't. You ever see those old guys? Doesn't matter what the hell they do to themselves, they just grow old anyway, you know? Meet a guy, be the oldest bastard you ever met, you know? Just does everything wrong, you know? Every day, I smoke four packs of cigarettes. I drink a bottle of Jack Daniels and I hit myself in the head with a shovel every goddamn day. <laughs> I'd like to die. God, I'd love to die. I... One time I put a shotgun in my mouth and blew the whole goddamn back of my head out there. And... Just a slight ringing in the ears. <laughs> I can't die. I met, in, in the airport, I met uh, Matlock. Uh, Matlock is uh, Andy Griffin. Yeah, Andy he used to call himself Andy Griffin. Now he goes by Ben Matlock. <laughs> really calls himself Ben Matlock. But uh, so uh, yeah, I went into the airport and he was in there. And you know the bookstores they have in the, in the, in the oh, airport. Yeah, yeah, sure. So he's in there. He's reading a big one of the big thick mm. books. You know, mm -hmm. smart guy. You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm standing over there. I'm I look. I'm leafing through a Jughead comic. I see him over there. <laughs> So I think to myself, I say, hey, I'm going to sidle up beside uh, old Ben Matlock. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to grab one of them big books myself. He doesn't have to know nothing. Sure. Pretty soon we get in a conversation. Mm -hmm. We start talking. And, uh, and I, I find out uh, how he ever solved that case where Claude, uh, Claude Aikens killed. You remember, anyways, whatever. <laughs> I wanted to talk to right. him. Right. Uh -huh. So uh, take 10 minutes. I'm talking to him. I'm talking to him. He's very friendly, very mm -hmm. outgoing and everything like that. And uh, it was really nice. Then all of a sudden, I realized it wasn't Ben Matlock at all. Really? <laughs> it's not Andy Griffith? No, just some old man. And uh, <laughs> now, don't you think that this guy has a, a moral, you know, a responsibility to tell people instantly that he's not Matlock? <laughs> I don't know. Does that's, he that's a good question. I never thought of that. You know what else I like about the magic phone? Wikipedia. Oh, you ever use that? That's the best, man. It makes a democracy out of smartness. Everybody's equal now, you know? Used to be a guy go to school five, six years. Yo, let's talk about a real issue at hand. Trash piling up, it's time to take a stand. From plastic bottles to styrofoam cups. Our planet's drowning, it's time to wake up. Garbage trucks roll, streets lined with waste. But where does it go? It's not a race. To the landfill, a mountain of despair. But we can change course, show that we care. Trash talk, it's more than just words It's about actions, the change we deserve Reduce, reuse, recycle That's the plan for a cleaner, greener earth Let's take a stand Trash talk, it's more than just words It's about actions, the change we deserve Reduce, reuse, recycle That's the plan for a cleaner, greener earth Let's take a stand Single-use plastics, they gotta go From straws to bags, it's time to say no Bring your own cup, your own tote bag Small steps add up, let's not lag Sorting all waste, it's not that tough Recycling centers, that's where it's rough Separate paper, glass and cans Give them a new life, that's the plan 
Trash talk, it's more than just words. It's about actions, the change we deserve. Reduce, reuse, recycle. That's the plan for a cleaner, greener earth. Let's take a stand. But it's not just about the stuff we toss It's about the mindset, there's no loss Composting food waste, it's a win Turning scraps to soil, let's begin Educate the masses, from young to old The future's at stake, let the story unfold For the sake of our planet, our home sweet home Let's clean up our acts, together we roam Trash talk, it's more than just words It's about actions, the change we deserve Reduce, reuse, recycle That's the plan for a cleaner, greener earth Let's take a stand And then he'd talk to me and I'd be like, ah But now <laughs> Now it's all different I got my magic phone in my pocket So a guy will say to me, he'll go Hey Norm, you ever hear of a fella that went by the name of Claude Monet. <laughs> and I go, why, of course I have. I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> and I go to the bathroom. And I'm in there 20, 25 minutes, and I come back. I go, hey, uh, listen, uh, I was just, uh, we were talking about Claude Monet, and I just wanted to say that, you know what I liked about him was uh, his paintings. I liked the way he painted. He was a painter, and I loved how he used the paint to make paintings. And the guy goes, God damn, Norm, I've never been able to stump you in two years. I go, oh. uh, thank you very much. Uh, you're very kind. You know in the, uh, what's that? Oh, yeah, I know. No, you're absolutely right. That is my name. You know, when the people, when the people here ask me to do the show, you know, I got to say, I felt kind of weird, you know. I, I don't know if you remember this, but uh, I used to actually be on this show, you know. Uh, I used to do the uh, weekend update news routine. You remember that? And, uh, yeah. That's where I did the make-believe news jokes, you know. That was me, right? So then... A year and a half ago, right, I had a sort of a, a disagreement with the management at, uh, at the NBC. Uh, I wanted to keep my job, right? <laughs> and they felt the exact opposite. <laughs> so, so you see, they like, uh, they fired me because they said that I wasn't funny, you know? Now, now, with most jobs, I could have had a hell of a lawsuit on my hands for that, but, but see, this is a comedy show. So they got me, you know, you know what? You know what? But now, this is the weird part, right? It's only a year and a half later, and now they asked me to host the show. So I wondered, I go, hey, wait a second here. Hey! I go, how did I go in a year and a half from being not funny enough to be even allowed in the building <laughs> to being so funny that I'm now hosting the show. How did I suddenly get so damn funny? <laughs> It was inexplicable to me, because a year and a half, let's face it, is not enough time for a dude to learn how to be funny. <laughs> then it occurred to me, I haven't gotten funnier. The show has gotten really bad. <laughs> so yeah, I'm funny compared to, you know, well, you'll see later. But, <laughs> Okay, so let's recap. The bad news is, I'm still not funny. The good news is, the show blows. All right, folks, we got a bad show for you tonight. Dr. Dre, Snoop Doggy Dog, and Eminem are here. We'll be right back. Who are safer drivers, men or women? Well, according to a new survey, 55% of adults feel that women are most responsible for minor fender benders, while 78% blame men for most fatal crashes. Please note that the percentages in these pie graphs 
do not add up to 100% because the math was done by a woman. So. For those of you hissing at that joke, it should be noted that that joke was written by a woman. So now you don't know what the hell to do, do you? No, I'm just kidding. We don't hire women. Tell, 